Hi friends, welcome to Holiday Paper Crafting St. Patrick's Day style. Today we're going to be making this simple little treat to either share with your friend or keep for yourself. So grab your craft kit and a pair of scissors and let's get started. The first step in our project is to take your baggie that includes all of your paper items and we're going to open that up. I'm going to do a little unpacking and get things spread out. So retrieve all the materials out of that baggie and spread them out in front of you. So it's easy to see all the different parts that we have. You're going to find a few different things inside including this little fry package and so this is kind of similar to a little french fry container that you get at the local fast food establishments. You're also going to have a strip of green paper and a strip of shamrock paper. You have a green medallion, a black circle and white circle. You have a sheet of two shamrock stickers and one length of ribbon. So to get us started, I'm going to set my fry paper off to the side and we're going to start with the green paper and the shamrock strip. Now in your package, you received a little um, tape runner and some of you may have used one of these before and maybe you haven't. They're a lot of fun and they're super easy. In this tape runner, there is quite a few feet of double-sided sticky tape, really sticky tape, and it's such an easy tool to use. It works really well for layering and layering and layering paper on top of one another, and it really holds it down quite well, much better than a glue stick um, or liquid glue would work. So we thought we would include these in your craft kit for you this time. So go ahead and grab your tape runner, and there is just this little triangular lid that you can pull off the back side. And so go ahead and take that off. Um, to hold your tape runner, some people just kind of hold it like this. Some people on this ridged part kind of put their finger over the top so you can kind of see what I'm doing with that. I like to hold it that way. Um, it kind of helps me maneuver it in the direction that I'd like to go with it. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to take your shamrock paper, flip it upside down so the white side is up. And we are going to take our tape runner and you're going to place it at one side of your shamrock paper and gently press down and pull it backwards. So press and pull and the tape will just come right off onto your paper and then lift and you can kind of see that you have a shimmery strip of really sticky double-sided tape. So I kind of did mine off to the side and so I'm going to make a second row of sticky and then lift it up. <laughs> and then I'm going to take my shamrock paper and I'm going to center it in the middle of my green solid strip. And so it's going to look like this. And it's okay if it hangs over the edge a little bit. This length of paper is a little longer than what we're going to need to make that band going across the top. We wanted to give you some room to go ahead and hang over and then we'll do a little trimming. So here's our first strip. So now take this strip and flip it upside down so that shamrock paper is on your table and all you're seeing is this solid green. So put that down. And we're going to do the same thing that we just did. Um, take that sticky roller and we're going to make two or three, if you want to, rows of sticky strip on the back of the green. So press down gently and pull to the right or left if you're left-handed. And then go ahead and do another strip. And if you're having fun doing that and you really want it to stick good, go ahead and add a third strip down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then lift up and I have sticky on the back of this. So the next part is to attach this strip onto the front of your fry box. And so the front side is the side that dips down just a little bit, kind of if you were looking at a container full of french fries. So go ahead and lay that down. And we're just going to place this 
sticky strip across the middle and I kind of tried to center mine up and down. You can certainly position it as you wish. Yours does not have to look like this. We've talked about that in other classes, that this is art. So whatever you like the looks of best is the perfect way to do this project. When I'm creating today, I'm going to try and replicate this look just to kind of show you the steps that I took to get to this place. So grab that sticky and center it on your fry box and push it down really well. Just kind of rub back and forth and get that stuck down nicely. For the next step, we're going to work on making this little medallion that goes on the front side of your project. So you're going to grab your green medallion, your black circle, and your white circle. The first step to creating the medallion is to take your black circle and your double-sided tape, and you're going to put a few lines of sticky on the black. Then you're going to take it and center it in the middle of your green medallion. So it kind of looks a little bit like a flower, but it is the step, first step to our medallion. Go ahead and set that back down. Our next step would be to take the white circle and you're going to do the same thing. Add a little bit of sticky tape and center it in the middle of your medallion. So it looks like this. Great job, you've got it. The next step is to select one of your shamrock stickers and you should have two. You can peel one of those off. I think I'll use this one and place it in the center of your medallion. Your other sticker you can use elsewhere on your fry package later, or you can use it for another project. That's up to you. We really only need one if you want it to look like this one. But again, anything goes with this project. Okay, you've got your medallion ready. So you are going to adhere it to your fry box. And so again, we're gonna take this shamrock. We're going to put it face down. So this is what you're seeing. We're gonna put some sticky tape on the back side. Um, of that green medallion, the layered medallion. So do that, and then you're going to stick it on your fry box band. I centered it on mine. Um, you can put it off to the side, wherever you like. It's up to you, it's your project. Um, if you're thinking that maybe you would like to take some of your ribbon and tie it and place it on the side of your fry box, maybe you wanna put your medallion off to the side. Maybe you don't want to use all of your ribbon to tie your candy together. So lots of ways you can manipulate this project. But again, I'm going to go with the center and I'm going to push that down so it sticks really well. And then I'm going to just set that off to the side for right now. And our next step involves the candy. All right, friends, for the next part of our project, we're going to need this clear cello bag that was in your container and then your bag of gold and green candies and lucky coins. St. Patrick's Day typically brings to mind the colors gold and green with leprechauns and gold treasures. So we added an assortment of different um, chocolates and lucky coins. So take your bag of lucky coins and candies and open it up and then you're going to open up your cello bag and this is super easy we're just going to dump all of the candy in there now i'm not telling you that it's not okay to snitch a piece so if something looks really tasty to you and you'd like to give it a little try go ahead and pause the video right now try a little snack and then you can come back and finish crafting Maybe you're feeling generous and you want to give all the candy to whoever gets your lucky treat. So, or you can take a coin out for good luck as well. So your cello bag, you can either um, tie it up as it is, or if you would like, you could add a few of the green shreds inside the bag or all of the green shreds inside the bag. I'm going to show you that 
in this sample, um, I left the candy as is and plopped it inside. And then I put the shreds around it and kind of tucked it around. So you can kind of see what that looks like. So two options, you can do this or you tuck it on the outside or you can put the shreds on the inside of your candy bag and mix them around in there. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just make it just like this one again. And so I'm going to just tie my ribbon around the candy as is instead of mixing the shreds into the candy bag. So I'm just kind of tying it uh, once and then I am going to tie it in a knot or you can do it with a loop and bow um, like you do with your shoes, kind of like this. Whichever approach you like. Remember that I said you could cut your ribbon in a smaller segment to tie the bag and then you could tie a little something something and stick it on the front of your box as well if that's what you prefer. So here is the candy. Um, one thing you can do with your ribbon is you can kind of see that the ends are blunt cut so they're just straight across. You can take them and cut them at a little angle you can see that through my hand um, and just give it a little texture and so you can do that and so now we have our candy ready and our fry box is pretty close to being ready all right so before we stuff our fry box you might notice that we still need to do a little trimming here you can see that some of our belt or band is hanging over the edges and so what I would do is I would just follow along. You don't want to cut your fry box. That wouldn't be good. But cut next to it and trim off that excess. So again, don't cut your fry box. Just cut right along the side. If you're worried about doing that, concerned about that, I'm sure that mom or dad or a big brother or sister would be happy to help you do that. So now you can see that there's nothing hanging over the edge and it looks a lot tidier. Okay, so to pop your fry box open, um, just kind of take the two sides and push in. And it kind of pops open like a mouth. And then you just push this bottom up and it just kind of pops it into shape where it will stand up on its own. So what I'm going to do is open up my shreds. I think I'm gonna place about half of the package in the bottom. Um, that way it kind of lifts your candy up a little bit and when they take the candy out, there's still a little bit of fun stuff inside there. And so after I do that, I'm going to take my candy, tuck it inside my fry box and kind of get that situated the way I like. Kind of spread this out a little if you want to. After you get that um, candy in there the way you want it to look, then you can take your green shreds and just kind of tuck it around the side so you can kind of see it sticking out. It adds just a little more color to your project. So just kind of take it and push it around and have it, you know, some of it's a little bit loose there, but I don't know I think it just gives a little more pizzazz to your project and there you have put that in there um, there you have your St. Patrick's Day paper craft for today and you can either keep it for yourself or give it to a friend or maybe mom or dad grandma and grandpa always like treats but just kind of something fun and different to do um, most of the supplies I did purchase here in town and you can get them at uh, any of our discount stores, department stores, or crafting supply stores. The fry boxes are a little more difficult to find. I did have to order those online and they came in a large pack, but I think you can get them in smaller packs as well. So they are kind of a fun little um, package. It's possible they could have something similar to this um, at Hobby Lobby as well in the paper and scrapbooking section. They have some little containers like this or in the party supplies. So they might have something comparable if you're wanting to make these for your friends. 
So thank you for crafting with us again today. And we hope to see you at the library and hope to see you crafting with us again soon. Have a great day.